Hey guys, welcome to Chaos Theory. My name is Nicholas Burial, and now that we're done with the texturing and materials and so on of the speaker, I figured it's time to at least look at the camera settings and um, maybe we'll start on the lighting as well, but it might also be on the next video, but we'll see how far we get. So, um, the first thing we want to try and do is to set an angle, um, the, f the final angle we kind of want. And I figured we would try something along this line, um, mostly because I want to see a little bit of the top so the work we did with the buttons and so on will still be slightly seen. <clears throat> Uh, we could, you know, make an angle like this, but it's a bit boring angle and I want to try and get some reflections going on the, <clears throat> the metal mesh here, which can be uh, hard to achieve if the angle is pointing towards the ground instead. So we kind of want it, you know, I, I kind of wanted to do it something like this, but since we did make the top and so on, I, I want to, you know, I want to use that as well to our benefit. So something along these lines. I can press Shift F uh, to get my safe frames um, so I can see how much of the viewport I'm actually going to render. This is affected by our render settings in the common tab of uh, width and height. So right now it's 1280 by 720, which is fine. Uh, so that's 16 by 9 uh, ratio. Um, and when we we're sort of there with the um, with the perspective or with the angle we want, we kind of want to make a camera, uh, a V-Ray physical camera specifically. The easiest way to do this is to use the V-Ray toolbar and press the V-Ray physical camera button. When you do that from a perspective, we will jump straight into the V-Ray camera instead of the perspective and thus having the same angle as the perspective had beforehand. So we can now start using, you know, perspectives in a different window so that we can jump back and forth and we can adjust the camera slightly if we want to we can move it a little bit or whatever right so what we kind of need to know is that v-ray physical cameras um, works the same way as a normal camera um, in real in the real world works either a photo stills camera or video camera it doesn't really matter which one the most important part is that this camera is affected by light it can decide how much exposure we got in our image so if we start rendering oops if we start rendering with whatever these settings are we will get a very dark image we're getting this dark image because our light source the temporary light source we made is only at a multiplier of four and our camera has these aperture settings it has a film speed iso of 100 F number of 80, shutter speed at 200, um, 1 200th of a second. If I were to lower my F number, for example, so increasing the size of my aperture, um, thus allowing more light to get into the camera, uh, change it from 8 to 4, we can see that it gets lighter. Um, we could also change it to 1, and you'll see it'll get very bright with just the default light we had on from earlier. I'm gonna leave the settings though for um, as default, so 100, 8, 200, and then adjust my lights accordingly instead. Mostly because that we can change either way, but we kind of want to try and um, to only change one of them, right? So when we start making all these lights and we want to do our lighting setup for the speaker, we kind of need to decide, are we changing the multiplier of lights or are we changing the camera? The camera will, the camera's exposure will turn up all lights together and turn down all lights together. So it's easier to just leave one of them alone. And usually I leave the camera alone. Or in fact, if I have a sunlight, I'm not going to use it for this tutorial, but if I were to use a V-Ray sunlight, for example, I would adjust the camera to the sunlight's um, amount of light. So when I'm happy with that, I'll leave the camera and the sun alone. So I won't even adjust the sun's intensity. I will leave that at one and then I will adjust everything else, basically. So that's the way I go about it. So we're going to delete this um, 
this uh, the light source from earlier. So we have zero light sources right now. So if we render, we will get a black image because there are no lights, which is, you know, makes sense. Um, but I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about this camera as well. So we have the film speed, ISO, F number and shutter speed that works exactly like a real life camera. So ISO would, if we increase the ISO, we will increase the gain of the image, making it lighter. Um, normally in a real physical camera, in a real world camera, you would also increase the noise levels of your image. So you get more noise in the image itself. If we were to increase the F number, we would make the aperture more uh, less open, which means that we will have more in focus, um, but also letting in less light than normal. So a lower number creates more uh, higher exposure, higher more light in the image itself, um, but would also um, shallow the depth of field if we were to use depth of field. Right now we're not using depth of field. It's not on uh, per default, but if we do, we can decrease the F number and get a more shallow depth of field if we wanted to. Shutter speed is how fast the image is taken, the slower you take the image. So if it were one, one one hundredth of a second instead of two, one hundred, uh, two hundredths of a second, we would have a slower, it, the image would have been taken slower and thus we will have more motion blur, but also more light coming into the camera. So if we were to enable motion blur, we could have a lower shutter speed to get more motion blur if we have motion in our MRE image as well. Um, so that's kind of the basics of it. I can cover it a bit more later on if you want to. Please let me know down in the, down in the comments. Um, the last thing I kind of want to talk about with the cameras is that you could use a script to help with the composition of your uh, of your scene. Right now, this is just a normal or, or run of the mill um, product visualization, but. If you had a more complex scene, you might want to look into Rule of Thirds, uh, Golden Spiral, and so on. Um, but you can't really change the grid of the V-Ray physical, uh, physical camera per default. So what we can do is go to the Faction CGI. Uh, they actually did an updated image composition script helper. Uh, I'll leave a link for it in the description so you can find it there. Um, but when you have it, download it. You can go to scripts and you can say, um, make sure that you run the script if you haven't already. So go to run script, find your script minus in startup here and it's called uh, image comp helper, say open. When the script is run, has been run, you can right click on your toolbar, go to customize, go to toolbars and find in the categories, um, the faction CGI, which has the image comp helper we can drag that into our toolbar right there. When we open it, we can see here that we can uh, go to rule of thirds, a golden spiral or a golden triangle or a golden ratio, diagonals and so on. So we can even use diagonals to help us find the center of the image uh, easily. And we can use golden uh, rule of thirds if you wanted to. We can even zoom um, our Sorry, if we go to the golden spiral, we can zoom the spirals instead. We can offset them if we want to move them a bit. We can unlock it as well, and we can choose different aspect ratios. We can go to 16 by 9, uh, 16 by 10, all of that giggle. So I would really recommend using these um, as a help for getting a better composition because the composition can really make or break your uh, images in the in the long run and it's it's so you know it's so little work compared to all the modeling and all those kind of things so i would definitely recommend using something like this uh, script to help you get better compositions um right i know that uh nikas from uh, creative lighting .co, I have a link for him in my description, in the description of this video as well, actually in all the videos, uh, where you can get 10% off of his um, masterclasses. And he uses, his, I can't remember if this is the script itself he uses, but he uses one pretty much like this. So um, he, he has some really cool masterclasses about composition and lighting and so on. So I would really recommend going to something like his classes and and really going in depth into what you can do with uh, with composition and also lighting, in fact. So yeah. So anyway, 
Um, that's just a quick intro to the camera. Next up is lighting, but that will be in the next video. So I will see you there. Bye.